Passover lamb has been sacrificed. It says in Romans 8, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh would condemn sin in the flesh. Or it says also in the Bible, he became sin for us. What's that? That, go, I mean, that, makes, that would make no sense without the sacrifice. The sacrifice, one of them, is called the hata'at. Say it. And that, I know it sounds kind of, it's like a hot sacrifice. It's hata'at. Hata'at. What it means is, it's the sin offering. And what it means is, it also, it doesn't just mean sin, sin offering. The word literally also means sin. So in other words, the sacrifice that's the sin offering is become sin. It becomes so identified with sin that it could be translated as that sacrifice is the sin. And then that sin is killed. So here, now take that, and it says God, 2 Corinthians 5, made him who knew no sin to become sin for us. That's exactly what the sin offering is. That's the same also for the guilt offering, which is called the asham. Try it. Asham, it means the guilt offering, the offering that takes away guilt, but it also means the guilt. So Messiah, the sacrifice, would, I would say the sacrifice, would become so identified, it would become the guilt. It was your guilt. That was the sacrifice. Once it's killed, it's over. So Messiah has become so identified with sin, he becomes sin as sin. He becomes as guilt itself. He who gave himself for our sins, Galatians 1, that he might deliver us out of this present evil age. Hebrews 10, when he had offered himself, he'd offered one sacrifice for sin forever. Again, again, you, throughout the Bible, you cannot, we cannot truly understand the new covenant without understanding the sacrifice. By the blood, by his blood you were cleansed. By the, the blood of Messiah cleanses us from all sin. Here's another verse that is really opened up with the mystery of the sacrifice. First Peter 3 says this. Messiah suffered for sin once, the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit. The bringing, and then it says in, in Hebrews 7, 19, the bringing in of a better hope by which we draw near. We draw near. Now, there's a word here in Greek here that is linked to the word in Hebrew, korban. Try it. Korban is the offering in the Hebrew scriptures that means to bring near. Literally, to bring near. The sacrifice that brings you near to God. It says that the, the sacrifice of Messiah has the effect of bringing us near to God. It says this in Hebrews 13. The bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy place by the high priest as an offering for sin is burned outside the camp. Therefore Yeshua, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Outside the gate. Interesting. Interesting. It says that the sacrifice was taken outside the camp, and it says, so Messiah suffered outside the gate. What's, that? What's the link? Well, the tabernacle was in the camp of Israel, but then when they went to Jerusalem, they went to Israel, it became the temple in Jerusalem. So outside the gate is, is equivalent to outside the camp. So Messiah had to die outside the camp outside the gate. And something else here, because it says it was burnt. Well, Messiah is also, this, this offering was called the Ola. Try it. You who speak Spanish, you do very well with that. Ola. Ola means the, when we say burnt offering, it means the offering that goes up. It ascends. It's the complete, total offering of God. It goes up, it's totally consumed, it's burnt, totally consumed. That's the burnt offering. What does it have to do with Messiah? Well, well, when, if Messiah is the fulfillment of Genesis 22, when Abraham says, offer, it says God says to Abraham, offer up your son, then he says, offer up your son as a what? 
olah, as a burnt offering. So saying that Messiah is the fulfillment of that, he is a total offering, meaning, he, meaning he's totally consumed on the cross. Totally consumed, totally ascending to God. You might ask, you know, where is the fire? Because Isaac said, here's the fire. Well, the fire is the judgment that he endured, which he endured an eternity of hell because the full judgment of God came upon him. And so therefore, it's an eternity he did in time and space. Interesting in the word in the Greek, you know, when, when the rabbis translated Genesis 22, Abraham offering up Isaac as the burnt offering, the word for burnt offering is holocaustos, or we get the word holocaust from. 1 John 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not just for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, there is a doctrine that there are many who believe that he only died for some people. Well, this clearly says he didn't just die for our sins. He died for the sins of the world. He is the propitiation. It says in John 4, 1 John 4, this is love. Not that we love God, that we loved him, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation. What's a propitiation? This is totally joined to the mystery of Leviticus, sacrifices of Israel. Propitiation in Greek, helasmas, is the Greek word used to translate, get this word, to translate the Hebrew word kippur, as in Yom Kippur. So it says, so literally it's saying, for he is our kippur. He is our kippur. Now for 2,000 years, the Jewish people have observed Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, without any atonement for the day. It's been a Yom Kippur with no Kippur. It's just been a Yom. Where's the Kippur? It means the Kippur somehow got lost. The Kippur is Messiah. That's the answer. He's everything. That's why there's no sacrifice in Yom Kippur today, because He is the sacrifice. That's why there's no lamb served on Passover anymore, because He's the lamb. Romans 3.25 says...